This is going to be a pretty exciting video, and that's because the Samsung Galaxy S11 has been leaked. And yeah, this is pretty much how it is going to look like with that massive Penta camera module on the back, which seems to be even bigger than on the iPhone 11 Pro Max. So without further ado, these are all the latest leaks and rumors on the Samsung Galaxy S11. So grab that popcorn and those drinks and enjoy. How does 100 gigabytes of mobile data for just 17 pounds a month sound like? Pretty unbelievable, doesn't it? Well, it's actually real thanks to Smarty Mobile, our sponsor for this video. Now, this is a Black Friday exclusive deal, only available until December the 3rd. And if you sign up using the link below, you not only get those 100 gigabytes of mobile data for 17 pounds a month, but you also get one month for free. Okay, so the S11 has been leaked quite heavily, and we even made a full video about two weeks ago covering everything we know up until that point, so the full leaks and rumors on the S11. So that video split into eight different sections covering everything from the display, uh, the battery, the camera, special features, and more. So if you want to get a very detailed look at the S11, do check out that video first, since this one is mostly focused on just the more recent leaks since our previous video. And the biggest leak actually comes from OnLeaks. Now OnLeaks has had some pretty outstanding track record in the past, up to the point where if he does leak uh, something, or even especially a render, a full render, then we can probably bet that that's exactly how the phone will end up looking like. And the S11 is no exception. On November the 23rd, OnLeaks teamed up with Price Baba to give us a first look at the Samsung Galaxy S11e, the lowest end model of the S11 lineup. And as you can probably tell, the S11e is actually a gigantic departure from the S10e that we got last year, or you know, this year actually in 2019, we're still in 2019, uh, but yeah, we no longer get thicker bezels and a flat display, but instead we get some very very thin bezels and a curved display as well. And speaking of that display, the size of it actually got a pretty big bump from 5.8 inches to 6.2 inches, making the S11e even bigger than last year's, or again, this year's, uh, Galaxy S10, the regular S10, which is quite, quite impressive. Then, the aspect ratio has also been increased to 20 by 9 from the previous 19 by 9, so in this case, it will be noticeably taller than the S10e was. Also, uh, the camera module is now in the middle, or the camera cutout, uh, is now in the middle, so similar to how it was on the Note 10 Plus and the Note 10 rather than to the right like it was on the S10s. We also seem to be getting a triple lens camera module from the dual lens one that we had before. Uh, the Bixby button has been removed, so the only buttons that we do get now are the power button and the volume buttons. Now on the S10e, we did have a fingerprint reader built into the actual power button, rather than the in-display fingerprint reader that the more expensive S10 and S10 Plus had. However, I cannot really see any fingerprint reader embedded into the power button, which means that the S11e will very likely get an in-display fingerprint reader. And I gotta say guys, I really really love this blue color from Onleaks' render. And considering that this is in the render itself, it's very likely that this color will actually be one of the color options that Samsung will have for the final version of the S11e. I actually think that this is my favorite shade of blue that I've ever seen on a smartphone. But of course, that this is just a render. So this shade of blue will most certainly look a bit different, quite a bit different in real life. So the S11e looks pretty stunning. So if Samsung prices this well, then uh, this will be one of the best-selling phones of 2020 in my opinion, because it nails everything so, so well. This is so much better than the iPhone 11, the regular one is, and it might even be better overall than the iPhone 12, the entry-level iPhone 12 will be. At least, I don't know, th this looks like a pretty stunning phone. Let me know in the comments what do you guys think about the S11e. Okay, so that was the S11e. Now, uh, on November the 22nd, Onlyx teamed up with another tech website, in this case 91 Mobiles, and showed us the Galaxy S11. So this would be the second, or, you know, the middle offering in the S11 lineup. And this is actually the one that we base our own Zone of the Concept on. And the S11 does have a few changes from uh, the S11e. First off, the bezels do appear to be thinner than on the S11e, especially if you take a look at the side bezels, there seems to be a very noticeable difference here. And then the top and the bottom bezels also appear to be quite a bit thinner as well than on the S11e. And you know, it actually makes sense for it to be that way, because the S11e will be the entry level in the Galaxy S11 lineup, so it needs to look a bit more 
inferior, so to say, than the more expensive options. And we also get a larger display now with the S11 as well. So we get a 6.7 inch panel up from the previous 6.1 inch panel that we got with the S10. So yeah, that's a gigantic increase in the display size. This makes the S11 even bigger than the S10 Plus was last year and actually the exact same display size as the gigantic S10 5G had. But then on the back, this is where we get even bigger changes. So rather than three camera modules like we had on the S11e, we now have one, two, three, four, five, six modules. Well, five because the one on the bottom is very likely the microphone. So there we go, a Penta camera module plus a microphone plus a flash, uh, and we get a gigantic camera module on the back. Personally, I don't really have a problem with this at all, as long as the camera quality is improved, and the good news is that, well, it will actually be improved considerably. So the main camera module would be upgraded from the Samsung Galaxy S10's 12 megapixel module to an insane 108, yes, 108 megapixel module. So this is Samsung's latest and greatest smartphone camera sensor, at least when it comes to the resolution. And its new sensor is quite massive, not just in terms of the resolution, but also in terms of its physical size. So compared to the previous sensor, which measures in at 1 cm diagonally, this one is 1.91 cm. So pretty much double the size of the previous one, uh, which could also be the reason, easily the reason for, you know, Samsung having such a large camera module on the back of the S11. But as most of you probably know, or at least hopefully know, the megapixels don't mean quality. They just mean more resolution so that you can, you know, zoom in more, but that's it. Think of a sensor as a chessboard, a grid, where the size of the board is actually the size of the sensor and each of the squares inside the board are actually the pixels. So if you increase the number of pixels, you need to make them smaller, otherwise they would not fit on the board. But here's the thing. Pixels capture photons or light particles. The larger the pixels are, the more photons or light they can capture. So, if you want a sensor to be good in low light, you need to have as few megapixels as possible, otherwise the pixels would be so, so small that it would be barely able to capture any light, and the images would be extremely soft and blurry in low light. So there you go, this is why high-end smartphones such as the iPhones, the Samsung Galaxy phones, even the Google Pixels, they've always had a fairly low resolution camera, you know, a 12 megapixel camera so that, you know, with 12 megapixels the pixels are quite large and they're very good in low light. And this is also why mid-range phones from Xiaomi, OnePlus, Oppo added 48 megapixel sensors. 64 megapixel sensors and now even 108 megapixel sensors uh, with the Xiaomi Mi Note 10 just because having a larger megapixel count is extremely important uh, to have in that mid-range category where specs the numbers on paper mean a lot and you know that doesn't necessarily mean that a camera itself is better. So yeah, I am a bit worried in terms of the low-light performance on the S11, considering that the Xiaomi Mi Note 10, which has the exact same camera, by the way, that 108 megapixel sensor that Samsung will be using in the S11, yes, same camera, uh, yeah, that phone has been demoed, and it doesn't really have the best results in low-light, or even in daylight. Like, if it's a bit cloudy, if it's not that sunny outdoors, well, the results, they, they were not that great. Marquez actually did a very good video on that phone, the Xiaomi Mi Note 10, explaining how the camera works, and how sharp it actually is in the middle, and then it actually uh, softens up quite a bit towards uh, the edges, and yeah, it's not great in low light. So definitely check out that video if you wanna learn more about the Xiaomi Mi Note 10, which again has the exact same camera, the same sensor as Samsung will have in the S11. So I do hope that Samsung optimizes this heavily in software, but yeah, there you go, a 108 megapixel camera on a phone, especially on the S11, this is pretty nuts. Also, we are getting 8K video recording on the S11, up to 30 frames per second, which is again nuts on a phone. I mean, we barely even have any professional cameras that can do 8K, there's barely any cameras that can do 8K, and Samsung will be the first one to support 8K on a phone. I guess that this is also a way for Samsung to promote and sell their brand new 8K TVs, now that they also have a phone that can film content for that TV, that was one of the main complaints. Um, in terms of buying that TV, you actually had no 8K content, but there you go, now if you buy the phone, you can shoot 8K content, so it's a win-win. So the main camera inside the S11 is going to be a gigantic upgrade from the S10's camera, which, fun fact, had the exact same sensor specs as the S9, the S8, and the S7. So yeah, Samsung hasn't really updated the camera on their Samsung phones heavily, the sensor itself, since the Galaxy S7. Speaking of upgrades, you still have until uh, December the 3rd to upgrade to Smarty Mobile, which offers 100 gigabytes of mobile data for 17 pounds a month. 
Also, Smarty is powered by 3UK, and this is honestly the best deal that I've ever seen for a smartphone plan. That's pretty nuts. Also, you can cancel it at any time that you wish. So it's not a you know full year contract. It offers unlimited calls, unlimited texts, free European Union data roaming. So you can actually use those 100 gigabytes of data outside of the UK when you're traveling in the European Union, which is pretty awesome. Oh, and in case you're wondering, hey Daniel, how are the speeds? They should be pretty bad considering what you know they're offering. Well. Not really, they're actually pretty good. So I was getting about 30 to 40 megabits per second upload and download when I tested this outdoors. Obviously this does depend on your location, but that's what I was getting, for example. So you can get all of this plus one month for free by using the link below. But yeah, hurry up because this offer ends on December the 3rd. And thanks again to Smarty for sponsoring this video. Okay, now going back to the S11's camera module, I've only talked about the main module, but we do have quite a few more modules left. So the top and the bottom ones would be the zoom and the ultra wide angle modules. Uh, the zoom module is actually expected to offer up to 10x optical zoom or actually lost the zoom uh, in combination with that 108 megapixel sensor. So that's pretty nuts. That's pretty incredible. And we would then have a digital zoom of up to 50 times. So yeah, this camera would be very similar to the zoom capabilities that we got with the Huawei P30 Pro, or at least very close to that. And then we also get two more modules, which we don't yet know what these are actually for. So some of you might think that, oh, they're actually time of flight or TOF sensors, similar to what we have on the Note 10 Plus, which can actually be used for uh, AR and also 3D depth mapping. But I'm not fully sure about that, and I'll see why in just a second. So I think that one of them is a macro lens, because quite a lot of mid-range smartphones did include a macro module in 2019, so I do see Samsung including one on the S10. Um, and then the second one could be a depth sensor, yes, for improving portrait mode photography, just, just basically a camera uh, for improving depth mapping, because keep in mind that the other camera, the zoom module, if that's a 5x, then uh, the actual viewing angles would be very different from uh, the main module, so in that case you need something like a 2x module just for that portrait mode, if you know what I mean. So that's what I think, and the reason why I believe that these are not time of flight sensors is because Onlyx also leaked the big Galaxy S11 Plus, so yeah, there you go, this is how the big S11 Plus looks like. We get the same design on the front as the regular S11, just with an even bigger 6.9 inch display, making this even bigger than the Note 10 Plus, which was a mammoth of a phone. And now, if we take a look at the back, you can see that the camera module itself is even bigger than on the regular S11, and the camera modules themselves, they are arranged in a very different way as to how they are on the regular S11. So we get five modules, just like on the S11, but we also get two more dots, which to me look like they could be either dual microphones or time-of-flight sensors indeed. Keep in mind that these were missing from the regular S11. Uh, but yeah, they're a bit small for them to be time of flight sensors, but at the same time, there is no cutout in the glass itself for them to be microphones. So yeah, do let me know what do you guys think that those two dots are for? Maybe lasers for autofocusing? Now, when it comes to the front-facing camera, this will very likely be upgraded to a 4K 60 frames per second camera so that it matches the frame rates that the iPhone 11 Pros have. Uh, because at the moment, the S10 Plus and the S10s, they can do 4K, which is pretty awesome, but only at 30 frames per second. And oh, the headphone jack will be removed from the S11. So just like with the Note 10 Plus, you would either have to use a dongle, which will probably not be bundled inside the box, just like we didn't get one with the Note 10 Plus, for example, or you would have to use wireless headphones, such as the Galaxy Buds 2, which have also been leaked, by the way, and they're supposed to be launching alongside the S11. Speaking of sound, the top speaker grille is expected to be even thinner than the one on the Note 10 Plus, which is already absolutely minuscule. Minus, I, I swear I can't pronounce that word. Minus school, mini school, definitely not mini school. But yeah, that was incredibly thin. You could barely even see it. And since the headphone jack is also being removed, we might be getting dual speakers on the bottom. However, in Onyx's render, there was only one speaker grill and then one microphone port on the other side. In our render, we actually added a second speaker grill. So there we go. This is how all the three Samsung Galaxy S11 models will look like. Now, Ice Universe, who's also a pretty well-known leaker at this point, did say that Onyx's renders are not 100% correct. Now, he didn't say that he was wrong, but at the same time, he did say that the final version will be more beautiful than uh, what Onyx has showed us. So, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Now, Onyx has had a very good track record in the past, so my guess is that this is actually the final design. It's just that Samsung might be making a few more tweaks here and there until February when this is supposed to launch, or at least, you know, be announced. Uh, by maybe shrinking down the camera module, maybe, or even reordering the lenses a bit. But yeah, the main idea of the design would be very similar or should be very similar to the one that we've seen from all lakes. But yeah, let me know in the comments your thoughts on the S11. Do you think it's a big upgrade over the S10 or 
Do you think it's mostly, you know, just the same thing with a slightly better camera? I think from the front at least it's it's pretty much the same thing, but from the back, well, the camera, that's where it's at. So if you care about the camera a lot, then uh, this will be a pretty big upgrade. But yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Uh, definitely check out Smarty Mobile, like I said before, for that offer, which ends on December 3rd. And don't forget to subscribe to notifications if you want to see more in-depth tech videos and more leaks and rumors like this one was. And yeah, more in-depth tech videos like this one hopefully was. So thank you for watching. Hopefully you finished that popcorn and those drinks. I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. So in effect, signing out. Cheers.